Hey everyone, welcome back to Head and Neck Anatomy. In this video, we will be going over the muscles of the tongue. These muscles play important roles in speech, chewing food, and swallowing. There are two main groups of muscles, the extrinsic and the intrinsic muscles, and we'll start off with the extrinsic muscles, so let's get right into it. The extrinsic muscles of the tongue attach to the tongue's other structures. The extrinsic muscles include the genioglossus, the styloglossus, the hyoglossus, and the palatoglossus. All of these muscles are innervated by cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve, except for palatoglossus. The first extrinsic muscle that we will talk about is the genioglossus. The word genio means chin, and this tells us that the genioglossus muscle originates near the chin. The genioglossus muscle is responsible for protruding the tongue out of the mouth. And a good way to remember this is to remember that like how a genie pops out of a lamp, the genioglossus protrudes the tongue out of the mouth. The next muscle we're going to talk about is the styloglossus. And the stylo in the word styloglossus refers to the styloid process, which is where the muscle originates. Because the styloglossus originates at the stylo process, which is towards the back of the mouth and attaches to the apex of the tongue, it makes sense that the muscle contracts to retrude or pull the tongue towards the back of the mouth. Moving on, we have the hyoglossus, and the word hyo refers to the hyoid bone, which is where the muscle attaches. As you can see in the image, the hyoid bone is posterior and inferior to the tongue, so it makes sense that the hyoglossus retrudes and depresses the tongue. And now we also have the palatoglossus. Now remember the word palatoglossus has the word palate in it. So it makes perfect sense that this muscle elevates the tongue towards the palate. The palatoglossus muscle is the only muscle of the tongue that is innervated by cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve. So now we're going to move on to talk about the intrinsic muscles of the tongue, which means that these are the muscles that lie entirely within the tongue. So let's get a nice cross section and a zoom in on the tongue so we can see what we're talking about. So the superior and the inferior longitudinal muscles both shorten the tongue. So when I say shorten the tongue, I mean to pull it inwards, like so. I also want to note that the superior longitudinal muscles are orientated longitudinally and run in an anterior to posterior fashion. So this anterior to posterior fashion explains why the superior longitudinal muscles curl the tongue upwards. And now we're moving on to looking at the inferior longitudinal muscle, which as mentioned previously, works to shorten the tongue by pulling it inwards. And on a similar note, the inferior longitudinal muscles also run in an anterior to posterior fashion, which allows these muscles to curl the tongue downward. So the last muscles that we're gonna talk about are the transverse and vertical lingual muscles. The transverse lingual muscle fibers run laterally from the medial aspect of the tongue. This muscle elongates and narrows the tongue. Now the next muscle, and the last muscle that we're going to be talking about today, is the vertical lingual muscle. The vertical lingual muscle fibers run vertically in an inferior to superior fashion, and this muscle works to flatten the tongue. And now we are moving right into example question one. So which muscle is involved in the protrusion of the tongue? The genioglossus, the styloglossus, the hyoglossus, or the palatoglossus? Now I bet you're sitting there wishing you knew the correct answer, a little bit of a hint there, but the correct answer is A, the genioglossus. Remember that just like how a genie pops out of a lamp, the genioglossus protrudes the tongue out of the mouth. The styloglossus originates at the styloid process, which is towards the back of the mouth and attaches to the apex of the tongue, so it makes sense that the styloglossus retrudes or pulls the tongue towards the back of the mouth. The hyoglossus, which is located posterior and inferior to the tongue, retrudes and depresses the tongue, and the palatoglossus elevates the tongue towards the palate. Now we're moving on to example question two. Which two muscles are involved in the elevation of the tongue? Now I'm pretty sure reading out the answer choice is basically a tongue twister, so take some time if you need it, but the answer is B, the mylohyoid and the palatoglossus. The mylohyoid muscle elevates the floor of the mouth, which indirectly elevates the tongue. We will talk more about the mylohyoid in a future video series. The palatoglossus elevates the tongue up, back, towards the palate. As for the other muscles, remember that just like how a genie pops out of a lamp, the genioglossus protrudes the tongue out of the mouth and elevates it too. So the genioglossus does elevate the tongue, but remember the way the question is worded, both of the muscles have to be involved in elevation of the tongue. So now we move on to the styloglossus, which originates at the styloid process, which is towards the back of the mouth and attaches to the apex of the tongue. So it makes sense that the styloglossus retrudes or pulls the tongue towards the back of the mouth. And the hyoglossus, which is located posterior and inferior to the tongue, retrudes and depresses the tongue. So now let's move on to a quick summary of the actions of the tongue. 
So first we have the palate of glossus, which works to elevate the tongue. And then next we talked about the hyoglossus, which if you remember, depresses and retrudes the tongue. And then we moved on to talking about the styloglossus, which if you'll remember, this muscle retrudes the tongue. And last but not least, we have the genioglossus, which acts to protrude the tongue. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.